Hello guys and welcome back to TNT Madness. Today we're going to be looking at an absolutely massive hammer. It has a total of 280T firing at it which will allow you to stack up to over 240 sand which is absolutely mental for pretty much any of your giant cannons whether it be a one shot, a tunneler, an anti-nuker, uh, a reverse one shot, really anything like that, this hammer will definitely have your need sword for that. And the reason I'm making this video is I was working on my one shot and I was doing testing for it and I thought why not do a video of one of the possible hammers I might use for it. So this is going to be most likely the one I actually use for my one shot cannon. I have nearly finished it anyway, it's just I am horribly bad at trying to compact huge cannons because they take absolutely forever and I've honestly been working on it for like two months but anyway this is a very it's not the simplest hammer but the main concepts are very simple and then you just got to pretty much hook up all the redstone so let's have a look at it in action so to start with I should probably explain how this works so what I have here is essentially one side of the hammer where we have our squid farm which I have no idea why there is a squid in there but what we're going to be trying to do is this will have all our TNT which will then go down here and then we're going to try and shoot it down into this hole here which will be your chamber for where you actually fire your giant, where you fire all your TNT. And also one thing that is sort of off topic but one way to think of TNT cannons is like a moderately simple gun because you're trying to put a bunch of stuff into a barrel and then fire it really fast and it does like a million and one things. It's essentially like a gun but sometimes get more complex and sometimes get less. It's just a little thing that I figured out. So what's going to happen is if we press this button this will fire off then that back one will fire off and then all the TNT in this chamber will fire off. So this will fire down on this side, then on that side, and then it'll fire down here. This will push the TNT to this side, and then backwards. So, for anyone that didn't really see what happened there, what happened is all the TNT got fired this way, but it didn't get fired into one clump. It got fired into a pack of four, and the reason for that is it's just the TNT just can't fire enough, fire enough power because it's too far away to actually do it. But if we have one on one side, and then when it's in this clump and we fire it, while it's in that clump then it can push it all the way down here and what happens with this is if you have TNT that's like in the middle it won't fire it that far but if the TNT is here then it pretty much fires it all the way to the other end so that's how that works and it's essentially just a slingshot because it fires it this way and then fires it back down this way and then it'll explode down here if we just have another quick look at it you'll see it fires into this side into this side and then down into the middle and then you can see it fires left then to right and then it all fires down into this giant hole here and goodbye squid. So that's essentially how this thing works. And there's 140 dispensers here, but if we go over to the main thing over here, this one has got a total of 280, but it's still the same principle. TNT will fire down that side, that side, and then down the middle, and then it'll all fall into this tiny spot down here. But since it all happens really fast, it just, that's why I'm, you can extend the length of this. At the moment, I've only set it, got to set to eight ticks, so it's four ticks after your second one fires but depending on how well timed you have your cannon this shouldn't really matter for me eight ticks is plenty because for me i will have everything done extremely well timed which takes forever but some people might just be adding on to a cannon just having a really long repeater length which is pretty fine that's fine it's a lot simpler than what i would be doing so that's essentially how this thing works so now let's get into the red stuff so now onto the redstone, I'm actually redoing this part because my mic seemed to have died when I actually was recording this, so that's why we actually have the tutorial done even though there's no sound for that either. But anyway, onto the redstone, so the first thing I'm going to explain is actually what a hammer is, even though 90% of people will already know how a hammer works, sand stacking, just the basics of that, but for the minority that don't, I'm just going to briefly explain it. So, for example, let's say you have your TNT in the chamber here, and then your sand, and then you fire it at the wall, and let's say it's at the wall, and you have your, your TNT would be here, and your giant clump of sand would be here. So the TNT would fire the sand all the way down, let's say it's at 250 down to zero, then in that one tick that it is firing, the TNT will explode and for that one tick the sand will be registered at Y1 and at Y255 or 250. So what that means is that Minecraft when it regist 
it registers a piece of sand in one, so if there's no blocks there, it'll place the sand there. And then since the block's there, and since the sand is between 255 and 1 at the same time, it'll then go on 2, because 1's taking up, and then essentially redoes does that until all your sand is gone. Because, and the way you calculate how much TNT you need to push TNT to push sand far enough down where it can stack in one tick is 1 times 1.51. So let's say you have one one sand then you would use well you wouldn't use one sand so let's use 10 sand then you would need you would need one point you'd need 11.51 TNT and since you can't round it down you have to round it up so you'll need 12 TNT to stack 10 sand so very simple calculation I've just spent way too long with TNT can so I know that number off the top of my head but very simple so that's how that bit works but now on to the actual redstone so what we have here is our main button with our squid doing something. So this is going to be our input. It's sort of in an awkward spot, but you can rearrange it so you can just take a direct input from that block there. But what happens is you press the button, these redstone torches turn off, and then after 15 ticks they turn back on, depending on your input. And then what that will happen is it will fire off this propellant down the side, or booster, or whatever you want to call it. And it sends a signal that goes all the way around here to this side, which is your second booster, which activates two ticks after it. So what will happen is that will fire off then this one, but before that can happen, what happens is we have this thing here which goes, activates this piece of redstone, this block which will power the redstone below it, and in this middle line here, and since redstone can only go a total of 15 blocks, you will have it go all the way up here and it will actually travel to that piece, but this block at the very end is exactly 15 blocks away from the very first redstone. So due to that we can't stack it any higher else these back dispensers over here won't activate. So what we have to do is we have to bring up another slab staircase and then have another input which goes up here which then goes into this one which then can power this one very way over here. And all I, all I did after that was you just bring the line out to the second one which does the same thing and then the one up here which goes out to the second one. So moderately simple, I think it's pretty simple to be honest, just a lot simpler than most other cannons and stuff. So anyway, now on to the tutorial, but before I do that, if you want to not actually do the tutorial and you just want to have a look at this and test it with your cannons and attach it, then there'll be a world download in the description, you can just schematic it or whatever you want to do, but it's there in case you want, don't want to test. But anyway, now on to the tutorial. <laughs> So now on to the tutorial, what you're going to need is you're going to need an 8 by 17 area, which is quite long, but if you stick it with the rest of your cannon, depending on how big that is, it is a lot smaller than most other hammers, but anyway, that's the size of the area. What you're going to need is you're going to need some building blocks, you're going to need some slabs, you're going to need, what I'd recommend, I'd recommend having something like glass or just some cool material that you can like stick over so you can see the TNT explode and all that. I, it's just a recommendation, you can use solid blocks but I just recommend it. You're going to need some redstone, some repeaters, some torches, and 296 dispensers. I'm not explaining why you need these because no doubt if you're building a massive cannon, you'll have a huge amount of redstone resources, but dispensers are normally quite expensive, so you're going to need two 296 of them. You're just going to need 8 ladders and a few water source blocks and of course TNT and a button. Also, one other thing before I get into the tutorial, I said earlier that I had to re-record this, so I don't really want the footage to go to waste and it takes forever to rebuild this, so instead what I'm going to do is just have some music played over it and have it go slightly faster so it's like a short time lapse. But if you do the same block placements, it's essentially the same thing. And it's probably actually a better idea than most normal tutorials, so it's more of just an exper experiment to see what it looks like. So if you guys, tell me what you guys think of the new style of tutorial or just a different style, I'll probably go back to the same normal style of a talk over doing it at the same time, but I just want some opinions on it. So anyway, it's pretty much the end for me, so enjoy the tutorial. Mm -hmm. 